Hello YouTube. Alright, so this is um, where you'll end up uh, with the world download place, right? And this is also the same uh, schematic that you should have uh, if you downloaded the, the Lightmatic. Alright, so there are already a couple of signs that tell you that, for example, this is the input for the shulk boxes. It's kind of dirty, but um, originally I intended on just straight up not having this. Because, well, on the server that I play on, we use um, stackable shulk boxes, so I was planning on just putting that there. But, oh well, like, your hopper line would fit like this. Now, if you don't want to have the chest over there, you could just have a hopper line like this. And have carpet on top. That would look decent as well. But of course you have, well, next to no hopper locking, so I guess you you make your own choice. Apart from that, um, you'll see in the video that basically we have items coming in um, from this chest first, then this one, then this one. So it's going to go up like this. And this chest is uh, there for the full shulk boxes. So let's say I input um, these glass blocks, for example. This is the input, and um, whenever you you push items into a container, um, a compiler that's reading from this container is not going to be able to read it straight away. So that allows items to pass through, and they are going to, oh yeah, they fit in there. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, let's put uh, there some red concrete. Okay, so the items are going to pile up there because I preemptively uh, filled up the, all of the chests. And this is going to fill up, and this could fill up all the way up to here. And if that fills up all the way to here, it's going to trigger the box loader straight away. And then if that uh, activated, it's going to deplete all of the blocks that are here before it can turn off. Um, now the box loader can also um, activate if you have items sitting in there and it's in the how's it called? The, the the bufferless mode, whatever I called it, I don't remember. So this is going to be dependent on if this piston right here is extended or not. Um so basically if it's retracted it's going to be in the buffer mode, meaning that items are going to stay in these hoppers at the back. Now if you put um if you extend this piston over here, um, it's going to uh, make sure that we never have some buffer items in there. Um, now, when we input items, they're going to buffer there. But as soon as this uh, comparator turns off, it allows the box holder to start, basically. And... Well, this is um, a box collection that I came up with. I think it's decent. Now, I really, really hope that it's um, reliable. In my testing, it has been, and it doesn't seem to be directional or anything. I really wish it. it's really okay. Because it's, it's, it's kind of janky, I don't know, it's, it's weird. But anyway, I hope everything is fine with it. Okay, so when we have, um, you know what? Let me just um, show you that. Okay, this is, this buffers just like I said. Whenever the flow of items stops, it goes straight to the box holder, just like I said. Now we're going to pretend that this is full, and this is going to lock this hopper right there when. Um, 
when there are still items and this dropper right there. So that basically means that the items that are in the, this hopper right there are not going to be able to go down. And this hopper plus this hopper plus this hopper um, are going to have items and they're all going to need to go to the box holder before um, this can turn off and let the items in here go through. Now this can unfortunately um, lead to a clocking of um, the circuit in there. Basically it's going to pulse here and here because it constantly checks uh, for some stuff and it's going to clock this piston there and it's pretty annoying. But that's only going to happen if you have like two um, full boxes in a row. So I doubt it's going to happen really often if you input this in a real storage. Now you'll have realized that um, this doesn't sort any items, right? Um, so the goal with this is, is that you're going to use a multi-item sorter on top. So you could use something like uh, the Munimis. I think it's pretty good. Um, so you just align it just like I've shown in the video. You just want to align this hopper with this hopper. And because there's dust in there, we're going to put it higher. And we're going to put a dropper just like so. And well, your items are going to go straight down there. And you, you put up the filters in there. All right. Um, apart from that, there's um, a hopper line that here. That's for um, the box, uh, the shulk boxes. Um, how do I call that? An overflow protection, right? So um, this is the box that we uh, fold earlier. So we're just going to fill everything up. And over here as well. Unfortunately, if you have an overflow, it's also going to overflow to this dropper, which is going to be unaccessible. But let's be real, if you fold all of this, plus this, plus this, man, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to move your items to another slice. This is no longer a multi-item sorter slice. You should move to, to a bulk slice. Um, yeah, so let's now fill a shulker box. Oh, I'll show you that this is empty, right? Let's fill this up. And your shulker box is going to end up here. Um, basically, we're using the trick where we have um, this observer that's like this, and it's going to trigger this dropper. And afterwards, it's going to trigger this dropper. And if, if there are no items in this dropper, well, the items are going to go straight up there. But if this inventory is full, well, the item is going to stay there and get sucked by the hopper underneath. Um, okay, there's this thing over here. Um, this rests on block, right? Um, it's going to go there and make sure that we... make sure that we don't trigger the box holder straight away um, when we input items. Um, that's because, well, we want the items to flow from the bottom to the top, but um, we also want um, the items to drain when when no items are coming in. And so that's why this this circuit exists. Um, but a little downside of this is that if you if you're receiving items from this slice plus the slice that's going to be adjacent to it, um, this redstone block could go down here and it's going to basically lock this from um, going to the, the shulker box. 
but not permanently so don't worry about that it's just going to be temporary um, and when the input stops well it's going to allow the items to go uh, into the box holder now you might be scared of that <laughs> but don't worry um, the items can flow all the way up to uh, the dropper there and no matter what happens like if I power this it turns off the thing like I told you and if we fill this up and put we just need a few items in there okay right it's just going to to activate the box holder as long as there are items in there but the point is it's not going to overflow uh, all the way up to here um, apart from that I think that's pretty much it for all of that right um, I don't think there's anything more to really add to this I don't think you should have any other questionings about it but if you do um, you can leave your questions on my new discord uh, server that I linked in the the original video for this so yeah thanks for watching bye